church. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning, amen? If you're just visiting with us, we want to welcome you to Love Bridge. If you've been here before, we want to welcome you back. This first song is called Yes, I Will. Join with me as we sing. I count on one thing. The same God that never fails will not fail me. Perfect submission 
How y'all doing? Uh, welcome to Love Bridge Church. I'm Pastor Jason. So excited to see you guys here. Um, oh, man, it was such a quiet week here in the town. Nothing really uh, happened over there. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so uh, uh, allow me a moment of privilege as uh, someone born and raised here in Atlanta with our Braves winning the uh, World Championship. That's, I mean, that's, you know, just saying, that's like... Somebody said, your party like 1999? No, I like 1995 when we won it, 26 years. It's just, it's been a while. And so uh, we're, we're excited. And if, uh, I know I lose half the crowd when I say this. And if Georgia takes care of business, we'll be still, you know. Okay, I'll leave that alone. Uh, I love my Georgia Tech friends, though, I'm just saying. But uh, <laughs> excited about that. No, excited to be here. Um, one of the things uh, that I wanted to, to say, uh, so, so last week, y'all got me. Yeah, at, at the end of service, uh, y'all surprised me and I guess and, and my wife as well uh, for the pastor appreciation uh, thing for Pastor's Appreciation Month. And so after having time to read the cards and all of that good stuff, I wanted to and really process that. I wanted to take a time to really say uh, thank you um, and how much uh, I'm a words of affirmation person. And so the, the words, the support and the love is just has just been Hard to put into words, but I'm humbled. I'm thankful to each and every one of you who contributed. Uh, even those who said, man, I wanted to contribute. Maybe I couldn't. It's fine. I still appreciate it so much. And I'll tell you the thing that uh, as I was kind of reflecting on it this week, the thing that, that's mattered the most is how you've loved my family. Our, our kids are allowed to kind of be kids here <laughs> and find their way in church and, get, and be loved on. Like, it's a huge deal uh, for us. Uh, and so I just thank you all for that. Um, it's, you know, I'm, I kind of, uh, I was telling my wife, uh, kind of my, my, I guess, motto or just kind of how I go through life sometimes is I kind of expect nothing but appreciate everything when it comes to those type of things. I'm not a kind of me, me person kind of a thing. Uh, and so it's just, uh, yeah, it was really, really cool. And because I like to know what's going on, it was, uh, yeah, yeah, you think you're slick. So I, watch out for you next time. Um, in addition to that, or aside from that, I wanted to remind you that, so next week is our last week to prepare our boxes that we're going to send off for Samaritan's Purse. This is our deadline. And so I know some people have boxes and you hadn't had a chance to bring them back. We're going to remind you, uh, so next Sunday will be our, is our deadline to be able to send our boxes off. So please, ma'am, please, sir, or even those watching online, if you want to drop them off at the church office this week, um, please uh, make sure you do that. Um, it's a huge, huge deal. 
Um, again, one of the, the, the most impactful things that they do, because you might say, well, it's just a box, it's just Christmas, but no, because a part of it is the people that they interact with who receive this box, uh, they have a discipleship program that starts after that. So it's like they get the box kind of as an open door, but then there's like a, a track and a program to, to spread the gospel to them, and it's a huge, huge deal. And you might say, well, it's just a box, it's just some, some goodies, but man, you have no idea of the lives that have been changed that started just with a box. And so our little effort and a part of the big collective that God is doing in individual lives across the world is a huge, huge thing. And so I want to encourage you, uh, if, if, if you're like, oh, I've been meaning to do it, this is the week, what to say, last call, final call, whatever it is, uh, this Sunday, make sure you have your boxes back here. And we're going to pray over our boxes next week before they get shipped out and all of that good stuff. But I wanted to remind you of that. Um, in addition to that, uh, while we're here, we're still using kind of our, our COVID protocols when it comes to offering. So there's three ways that you can give here during our service today. Uh, one, you can text the word GIVE to 678-929-5736. You can also go to lovebridgechurch.com slash give. You can give safely and securely there. But also uh, on your way, on, there's a table over in the corner that has an offering a basket and envelopes and all of that good stuff. So please, as the Lord leads, feel free to give there. Amen. Uh, so, um, I'm excited about today's message. Uh, no, no spoilers or anything, but I'm, I'm super excited about uh, what we're going to talk about this morning. Uh, but before we do that, uh, the, the praise and worship team are going to come up and lead us. And so I'm going to ask you all to do me a favor. If you can, if you're able, if you can stand, can you stand right where you are? Because we're gonna, they're going to lead us into worship. The thing that we always remember is uh, a part of us worshiping. There's something that happens when we use the fruit of our lips to sing and give praise to God. And so in this moment, this isn't a concert for them, even though they're like rock stars. You got to know these guys. But uh, seriously, it's a time for us to give praise and honor to God. And so it's something that we get to do together. And so you might say, man, maybe I don't know this song. Maybe I do whatever. They kind of repeat the words are on the screen. But just sing and you give praise to God yourself. And so after this song, I'll be back with today's message. Amen. Father, we come to you this morning with just all that we are and all that we have, God. Our doubts and our fears and our struggles, even our victories, God, our losses, our distractions, our anxieties. And we just want to praise you this morning. We just want to give you praise, whether we're on the mountaintop or whether we're in the valley, God, whatever we are going through, we just want to praise you just the same. So we give you this song of worship. We give you this time of worship. We give you our hearts in worship this morning, God. Just knowing that it honors you and it pleases you to hear us. We trust you at this time. Oh, how I would I climb mountains If the mountains were where you are And oh, how far scale the valley if you grace the other side and oh how long have I chased rivers from lowly seas to where they rise against the rush of grace descending from the source of a supply in the highlands and in the high, you need neither more or less inclined. I would search and stop at night. You're just not that hard to find. I will praise you on the mountain. I will praise you in the mountains in my way. You're the song that where my feet are. I will praise you in the valleys all the same. No place, God, within the shadows. No less faithful when the night leads me astray. You're the heaven where my And 
God, I thank you for another opportunity to minister to these, your precious people. God, I pray right now that you will decrease in me and increase your influence. Uh, let it be none of me and all of you, God. And I pray that you will think, you will speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind, God. I pray that you will open up the hearts and minds and ears of those under the sound of my voice, God. Those in the room right now, God, even those watching online, God, that they will, as I'm sharing what you've given me to share, will hear a word behind that word that comes directly from you. 
I pray, Holy Spirit, as we sit upon the potter's wheel once again, that you will shine a light in the areas where we need to make adjustments, where work needs to be done, and that we have the courage to act on what it is you revealed to us this morning. So God, I stand in expectation for what you'll do. I yield myself into your very capable hands, and I just give you all the honor and praise, even in advance, for what you'll do in this moment. It's in Jesus' name that we pray, and all that agree with that say amen, amen, and amen. Man, they start singing like that. I'm like, wait, what was I supposed to do? I'm supposed to teach. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, so, so this morning, I'm going to be uh, teaching from the title, Healing Old Wounds. Healing Old Wounds. And, and I, I would encourage you um, to have something to write with or to jot your notes down, uh, if your phone or whatever it is. But even having something to, um, um, uh, we're going to go through and look at uh, several scriptures this morning. But, but I'm telling you, this, this is one of those, um, those, those deals, one of those, those messages where I'm, I'm just telling you, I believe there, there'll be something that, that, that God will say to you. The Holy Spirit will, will, will shine a light on something for you this morning. And so I'm, I'm excited about it when I have these types of messages. So. Uh, um, there, there's this old saying that's called, that says, uh, out of sight, out of mind. We've heard that, right? Out of sight, out of mind. And when we hear that, the basic meaning behind this is that a person stops thinking about something or someone if he or she doesn't see that thing or that person for a period of time, right? We understand that. And this makes sense, but I've learned in this that because we don't think about things, Maybe we don't see these things. It could lead us to believe that we are healed in areas of hurt and pain. You say, well, I hadn't thought about that in years. I hadn't, I hadn't, I hadn't talked about it. Ever. It might, might make us think that we're already healed. We, we've moved on from these areas. And, and where I recognize is that in areas that we've been wronged or mistreated, uh, uh, we could assume that we have forgiven those who've done us wrong. We could just say, well, you know, I hadn't even thought about that. I hadn't dealt with that in a long time. So you, you could assume that I, I've, I've forgiven them. I, I've dealt with that. And the Holy Spirit showed me something today that for, for some of us, like this idea of being on lockdown in a pandemic and, and, and just the, the, the craziness of the last, what, 18, 20 months, whatever it's been at this point, um, may have caused us not to see, interact, or think about uh, uh, some of the people who've done you wrong but now it is time for us to examine our hearts in the area of offenses, of grudges, of unforgiveness, and even bitterness. And so this morning, as people are, you know, finding themselves at places where we're preparing to get back together and to maybe go see folks or, or you're starting to have these interactions or whatever, I believe that it is time for us as we're preparing to move forward and adjust to our new normal to examine our heart. And we're going to talk this morning and deal with places of unforgiveness that maybe have just kind of seemed to sink in and gone under the radar. So I'm going to start by looking at some scriptures. If you have your, your Bibles, your smart devices or whatever, turn with me to John chapter 15 this morning. We're going to start there and keep them handy because we're going to go look at a couple other scriptures today. But we're going to start at John chapter 15 and I'm going to look at, uh, starting at verse 9, uh, and I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. Please feel free to follow along with whatever translation you have in front of you. We'll, we'll get to the same place. Um, but, but we just, you know, you know what we do. We're just going to look at some scriptures, just have a little conversation this morning. Amen. John chapter 15, and that's starting at verse uh, 9. I'll give you a second. John chapter 15, starting at verse 9. If you have it, say amen. If you need me to wait, say hold on. I can't hold on. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. John 15, 9. John 15, 9. Uh, New Living Translation. And we're going to read down to uh, verse 17. So this is Jesus speaking. And look at what he says here, starting at verse 9. He says, I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love, just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I've told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. There's no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. 
I no longer call you slaves because a master doesn't confide in his slaves. Now you are my friends since I have told you everything the father told me. You did not choose me. I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit so that the father will give you whatever you may ask for using my name. He says it again. This is my command. Love each other. Kathy, I'm going to ask you to do something. Can you go back to chapter verse nine for me? I want to go through the first part again. I, I love this passage because I love the way Jesus unfolds this, and it's almost like he answers questions that aren't asked. If you look at this, look at what he says. So he says, I loved you even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. My question was, well, how do I remain in your love? Verse, the, the very next verse. He says, go to 10. He says, when you obey my commandments, you remain in my love. Just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in his love. Then I'm like, Okay, wait, which commandments? He starts to answer that too. He says, go to 11. He says, I told you these things so that you may be filled with joy. Yes, your joy will be, sorry, yes, your joy will overflow. And he says in 12, this is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I loved you. The same way I loved you. It's interesting here when we look at this. If he tells us that, okay, we need to remain in his love. He says we remain in his love by keeping his commandments. And then he gives us the commandment, right, to love each other the way that he loved us. So the challenge now for us is to understand how he loved us so that we can love others the same way and make sure that we're keeping his commandments, right? That's pretty straightforward. That's, that's pretty simple. And, and when we think about forgiveness uh, here, when we think about this idea of forgiveness, I think sometimes when we talk about forgiveness, we're going to go to the scriptures on this. We tend to focus only on our human effort, right? We tend to only focus on our human efforts to forgive, but I believe we must recognize that God has first forgiven us as a model or example and then tells us to go and forgive other people. And of course, I'm going to go show that to you in Scripture. It's all in there. But turn with me now a couple books back. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 6. Look, I love when all the Bible people think I'm going to Matthew 18. They're like, oh, he's talking about forgiveness. He's going there. Ha ha. No. <laughs> Don't pre-read my text. Now we're going to Matthew 6. Uh, I chose Matthew 6 uh, because we used this in the very last series we were in. when We talked about the secret place. We looked at this scripture here uh, when we were talking about prayer. I'm going to Matthew 6, uh, verse 7. This is uh, New King James here. But Matthew 6, starting at verse 7. We'll go down to 15 here. But I chose this because we, we talked about this what, a couple weeks ago. Um, and it just, it, it, it fits in perfectly. So, so in Matthew 6, again, this was a part of the Sermon on the Mount. And, and here in this section is when Jesus is talking about prayer. Actually, in this part we're going to read, uh, he's going he's to actually give what we call the model prayer or the Lord's Prayer. Uh, but in this section, he was kind of giving them first. He was saying like, look, don't, don't go around doing what, what, what all these hypocrites are doing. They're, they have their reward by being seen by people and doing good deeds and all this stuff. And so we pick it up here in Matthew 6, verse 7, where he says this. He says, and when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think they will be heard for their many words. He said, therefore, do not be like them, for your father knows the things you have need of before you ask of them. And in this manner, therefore, pray, our father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Again, we see forgiveness is a part of this model prayer, right? He says, and, and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. But verses 14 and 15 is where he still emphasizes it again. In case you just thought that was a part of the prayer. Look at what 14 and 15 says. 14 says, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. That, that's, that's pretty plain, right? That's pretty clear, right? If you forgive people, then God will forgive you, right? 15, he says, but if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. And so... It's pretty straightforward here. There's no like little pastor stuff where we play tricks and it's like, you know, all this stuff. It's straightforward. He says, you have to forgive to be forgiven by God. And here's the thing. This commandment for us to love and this call to forgive are intertwined. If we're supposed to love people the way Jesus loved us, a part of that is this area of forgiveness, right? 
the fact that we're forgiven for our sins to be a disciple or follower of Christ means that we've been freely forgiven and so we're asked to freely forgive other people. We cannot walk in love and unforgiveness at the same time. So I like this thing they do on, uh, sometimes on like uh, social media where they'll, they'll have a statement like this and they say, read that again. <laughs> Let me read this again. We cannot walk in love and unforgiveness at the same time. We can't do it. Jesus said, love others like he loved us. Okay. I want to go somewhere else. I want to add something else on this. Just, just add in layers for a second. Go back with me to Proverbs chapter 17. Proverbs 17, 9. I know some people are like, man, Pastor, these are a lot of scriptures. Where we are at church. So, you know, I figure, you know, might as well, you know, since you got the Bible with you, might as well use it a little bit. Proverbs 17. Go to the first one, Kathy. There's two of them. Go back to the other one. Yeah, right there. Perfect. Proverbs 17, 9. Uh, New King James Version right here. Proverbs 17, 9. Ah, this is so good. It says, he who covers a transgression seeks love, but he who repeats a matter separates friends. Right? It's interesting. Uh, I'm, I'm going to show that same verse again in the Amplified because I like how it just breaks out uh, uh, the Hebrew words there. Go to, go to 17.9, the next one. Yep, right there. Same, same passage. is almost the same. You say, the Amplified, they just kind of amplify and explain out a couple of words here. It says, he who covers and forgives an offense seeks love. But he who repeats or harps on a matter separates even close friends. There's two things here about this passage that I think are just uh, uh, are, are just just solid gold here. One is the fact of this idea that if you have forgiven something, right, you've forgiven someone, are you walking around repeating and harping on that matter? I mean, if you've really forgiven it, why are we continuing to repeat or harp on it if it's really forgiven? Now, this is the part where if I was sitting next to my wife, she'd be doing one of these numbers because the pastor would be talking to us. <laughs> you know, well, we say we've forgiven something, but let me go back and replay and bring up the history of it. Right. So that's the first thing. This idea where at the end where it says who repeats the harps uh, on a matter can separate even close friends. But the thing that leaped off the page this time around looking at this was that very first line where it says he who covers and forgives an offense seeks love. It says this person is seeking love. And this verse hit different for me this time because it caused me to ask the question of what am I seeking in places where I've been offended, in places where I've been mistreated, in places where I'm tempted to carry a grudge. Here's three questions I had to ask myself. One, when interacting with those people, am I seeking love or revenge? It said that that person is seeking love who forgives, right? Am, am I seeking love or revenge? Second one is this, am I seeking love or do I want them to pay for what they did to me? Now, if you just look forward and don't make a move, we won't know that I'm stepping on your toes. Amen? That's, uh, okay, okay, we're good. Again, it said this person seeking love. The, the last one was this. When I think about those interactions, am I seeking love or to inflict the same type uh, uh, of, of hurt to them that I've experienced? The same type of whatever it is that you experience. The same type of mistreatment, right? The same type of hurt. The same type of filling that blank for you. Are you wanting to seek love in the relationship or to inflict the same thing that you've had happen to you? Since you're already in chapter 17, can you go down to verse 22? Same little passage, just scroll down to verse 22 since we're here. Verse 22, Proverbs 17, 22, New King James says this. It says, a merry heart does good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. Oh, man. When you look at this part right here, this is the idea that unforgiveness and bitterness will eat you up from the inside out. If you allow those things to fester, if you allow those things to sit there and you don't get rid of it, or if you don't deal with it, eventually it will deal with you. 
broken spirit, like bones. So now we have to properly deal with the unforgiveness, with, with strife, with bitterness that we have towards others by doing what? By forgiving them. Now, in the very same breath, allow me to say this. Uh, when you look at um, feelings of hurt, betrayal, uh, uh, frustration, and anger, and mistreatment, those feelings that you have when people have done you wrong are valid. So don't hear me say, uh, it's okay for you to have been mistreated. I'm not justifying what's been done to you. I'm not saying that, that it's okay, because it's not okay for people to treat you that way. It's not okay. However, we still have to learn to experience the emotion without it causing us to stumble completely. What does Ephesians 4 tell us? It says, be angry and sin not, right? I, I grew up in church thinking that, that, that being angry was a sin because uh, I didn't have full understanding. And, and usually what I recognized later was it wasn't the being angry. It was what I did when I was angry. That was, that was the part. It was like, oh, you were doing good until you just start, you know, keep on keeping on. And so it's not experiencing the emotion, but it's what we do with the emotion that, that, that matters. And so I'll sit and say this. In spite of what was done to us, we have to now go to the Bible to see what it says about forgiveness. And that has to be our guide. That has to be what governs our actions, what governs our decisions, how, how we, we uh, uh, change our mindsets. We align our mindsets with what the Bible teaches versus just what our emotions feel. We have to forgive. And when you start getting to this point of it, you know, that's when the yeah, but start, right? Say, yeah, but, yeah, you know, we say stuff like, we'll say, yeah, but you don't know how they made me feel, Pastor. You say, yeah, but, Pastor, you don't know what they did to me. Like, if you understood what they did to me, and again, I, that, that's fair. I, I don't know what was said. I don't know how you were treated. I don't know what they did, but I do know what Jesus tells us to do. If we're a follower of his, we have to forgive. If we're a follower of his, we have to forgive. We have to forgive them. As I was looking at this idea of uh, Proverbs 17, 22, about this idea of it eating us up from the inside, the Holy Spirit just said, just connected another completely, totally different passage to it. And I was like, oh, man, that's good. And so I want to share that with you this morning. Uh, go with me to Leviticus chapter 19 or your table of contents. Amen. <laughs> Leviticus chapter 19. You're like, Leviticus? Yeah. Leviticus chapter 19. We're going to start at verse 11 here. This, this is, oh man, this is, this, is, uh, this is some good stuff. Leviticus 19 here. In this passage that we're going to look at here, and I'm going to read it from a New Living Translation, by the way, just so we can follow along. But again, if you've got King James, whatever you have, we'll be, we'll be at the same place. Uh, in this passage that we're about to read here, uh, uh, the Lord told Moses to give these instructions to the entire community of Israel. So this is way before Jesus arrived on the scene or whatever. And it's, it's so funny that when you look at this passage, it looks like something that we see in the New Testament. So Leviticus chapter 19, verse 11. This might be your, your best Leviticus sermon all year. It was a little jokey joke. Okay. Leviticus 19, 11, it says this. He says, do not steal. Do not deceive or cheat one another. Verse 12, he says, do not bring shame on the name of your God by using it to swear falsely. I am the Lord. He says, do not defraud or rob your neighbor. Do not make your hired workers wait until the next day to receive their pay. Do not insult the deaf or cause the blind to stumble. You must fear God. I am the Lord. He says, do not twist injustice in legal matters by favoring the poor or being partial to the rich and powerful. Always judge people fairly. It says, do not spread slanderous gossip among your people. Do not stand idly by when your neighbor's life is threatened. I am the Lord. So here we go. Look at 17 and 18. It says, do not nurse hatred in your heart for any of your relatives. Well, that just messed up Thanksgiving. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It says, do not nurse hatred in your heart for any of your relatives. 
Confront people directly so you will not be held guilty for their sin. And look at verse 18. He says, do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against a fellow Israelite, but love your neighbors as yourself. I am the Lord. A couple things here. One, we still recognize that what Jesus said was he didn't come to, uh, uh, to, to, to end the law. He came to fulfill the law, right? So, so he came to fulfill the law. So these things we see in the Old Testament, this, this is still true. This wasn't like, oh, we're doing something new, so we don't have to abide by. You know, okay, just, well, that's a whole other conversation for another day. But, but, but go back to 17 for me, Kathy. I want to look at 17 and 18 one more time because, oh, man, this, this is a whole word right here, man. Do not nurse hatred in your heart for any of your relatives. Confront people directly so you will not be held guilty for their sin. Here's the question I want to ask you about this. Are you nursing and rehearsing or replaying the pain of the experience instead of forgiving and letting go? What we say, uh, 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 Brielle, read that again. <laughs> Are we nursing and rehearsing or replaying the pain of the experience instead of forgiving and letting it go? I can say with full confidence <clears throat> that there have been times where I have continued to nurse the hatred in my heart towards someone else based on what they did towards me. I replayed, and like, I don't know how your replay was, but my own replay was like, man, I should have said this. I should have, you know, I'm like replaying like, man, if they came to me again, I would, and you know, it's just all of that stuff where I'm just replaying it. And it's like, man, Go, go to that 17 again. He says, do not nurse the hatred in your heart. And I was like, ah, am, I, am I doing that? Hmm. Eventually, I got to this place where I realized I need God to forgive me. <laughs> so it makes it easy, easier for me to say I need to forgive them because I need him to forgive me. And we recognize that when you become a follower of Christ, uh, that, that he places his love in your heart, meaning he puts his super on your natural, giving us an ability to love and forgive that we couldn't in our own willpower, our own strength, etc. So it's not a, a, a question of do we have the capacity to do it. It's more so a question of will we do it? Will we forgive? Will we walk in love? Because if you say, hey, I'm a follower of Christ, then you have the ability to do it. You, you have the capacity. You have the ability to forgive. You have the ability to, to, to walk in love. And, and I tell you, again, almost like the passage of Jesus, <laughs> when you go back to, can you do 17, go to 17 and then go to 18, but go to 17 first. What I also love about this uh, here is like, when God gives this, the, the, these, this, this law, he says, Moses, tell these to these people. It's almost like he knew what I was going to say. Because it's like on 18, 17 here, he says, do not nurse the hatred in your heart for any of your relatives, right? Confront, pe confront people directly. And I'm like, okay, I ain't going to nurse the hatred in my heart, but I'm going to get them when I get an opportunity, right? But then he goes to verse 18, he says, and do not seek revenge or bear a grudge. I'm like, come on, God. I was waiting on my opportunity. He's like, No. Don't seek revenge or bear a grudge. <sighs> Don't seek revenge or hold a grudge. It's the idea that we recognize we represent Jesus. It, it, it's, it's so cliche now, but it's still true how we say you might be the only Jesus that some people see. And when they see us, do they see us seeking revenge or holding a grudge? Because uh, I, I could take a long guess. I don't think that's loving them the way Jesus loved us. Well, the thing is this, when you recognize or have these places, uh, the, the thing I prayed at the beginning was I said, Holy Spirit, shine a light on these areas where we need to forgive, right? Where we need to make changes, where maybe there's something in our heart. Um, uh, my favorite, not so favorite example personally was, uh, I remember years ago when my wife and I, we got on Facebook, uh, we joined Facebook all these years ago, and there was a guy who... Uh, we went to high school together. Um, we competed, played on the same teams, but we did not like each other. Like, just whatever. I don't know. Just did not like each other. 
And I remember, again, this is 15 years later, whatever it was at the time, uh, the guy sent me a friend request. And again, hadn't thought about him, hadn't whatever. But when I saw the friend request, my wife came in and saw me sitting there fussing at the phone. I was like, how dare you send me a friend request? We don't even like each other, da 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 And I didn't realize, again, out of sight, out of mind, all these years later, I never dealt with how I felt towards this guy. I was still mad like I was in, what, ninth, 10th grade, and we're playing baseball together, whatever. I'm like, I mean, I'm hot, mad. And it was like, Holy Spirit's like, okay, you need, you need to deal with that. So I accepted the friend request, you know. I mean, I'm just saying, did the right thing, I guess. But it reminded me of the fact that, again, sometimes you have those things that, that bring up stuff, and you got to learn how to deal with it, how to forgive, how to move on, and how to let it go. When the Holy Spirit shines a light for you, Maybe even as I'm, I am talking to you right now, there's a person, there's, a, there's something that happened, there's people that have come up, and you're like, oh, pastor. We were going to have a good Sunday afternoon at the church and dinner and all that stuff, but there you go meddling. We have to let it go. We have to actively forgive them. That, that's our responsibility, and that's what we have to do. Turn with me to Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11, uh, I'm going to read 25 and 26. I would encourage, man, read, read Mark chapter 11, so good. There's so much good stuff. I'm just, I'm just going to highlight one little piece of it, but that whole chapter, that'd be, that'd be a good read for later today. But Mark chapter 11, uh, verses 20, 25 and 26. I bring this up because sometimes what happens is we think like, okay, I can just kind of go on. Because, you know, what's weird about this kind of a thing when the Holy Spirit brings it up, only you know, unless you share it with someone, right? And so we can still be going through the motions of doing everything that seems correct. We can still be at church. We can still be singing. We can still be volunteering. We can still be doing all this stuff. But the Holy Spirit said, hey, you need to deal with this. And so look at what it says in, uh, in Mark 11, uh, 25 and 26. No? Okay. Mark 11, 25 and 26. I'm going to read it from the uh, New King James Version. It says this, sorry, it won't be up here for a second, but I'm going to read it to you. Mark 11, 25, 26. It says, and, whatever, and whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive you. The thing that I wanted to highlight from that is in verse 25, 25, 25, where he says, whenever you stand praying, it's almost like this idea like, we might think we can go through the motions and we're going to stand there praying and we recognize that if we have anything against anyone, I love the use of the word anything. Because anything means anything. It's not like, OK, well, just some of the stuff that's happened, you know, since I've been saved or whatever. No, anything. It says if, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him. Anything. If we have anything against anyone, we have to forgive them. And I'm really going to close with kind of like a final question and a few words here. You have my final question up there? There we go. Who do you need to forgive? Who do you need to forgive? So what I love about these messages are, I don't know who needed to hear this. I don't know who's watching at home that's like, man, pastor, I know I should have clicked off of this before you got to the good part, whatever. Who is that for you? Is there something that the Holy Spirit has brought up, even as we're, like I said, we're looking at these scriptures, we're talking about this, you're like, man, I didn't realize I still have this going on. I still have something on the inside that, that's odd. Um, I, I, we were in, in our little, um, our life transformation group, our small group class this morning, I was talking about this with the teens, and uh, they got a kick out of that old line about the, uh, the bitterness. Uh, you know, so I, so I told them um, I had a water bottle and I told them, I said, OK, if this is poison 
And I said, I'm just I'm just drinking it, drinking it, waiting on this other person to fall over dead. And they were like, uh, Pastor, you look crazy. Right. I was like, why would you think you continuing to drink and drink is going to make this other person fall down? And I said, exactly. That's what happens when we keep this unforge- this unforgiveness in our heart. It turns to bitterness. It turns to strife. And it is hindering us and not them. And you say, well, how important is it? Well, we saw in Mark 11 that he says, if you're about to pray and you realize that you need to forgive it. But we also see Jesus tell us that if you're about to give an offering and you recognize that you have an ought with somebody, leave it there. You know, go and make it right. Then give your offering. And so it is vital. These heart issues, these things that maybe we don't always check up on one another about. We don't always ask or, or we can assume because we're doing uh, what I'll call religious activity, right? We pray, we do all this other stuff, we see you at church, we assume it's good. But this is that other layer underneath that we have to talk about, that we have to deal with and needs to be addressed. Quite simply, if there's someone that you need to forgive, forgive them. It's time. It's time to let it go. It's time to, it's time to heal those old wounds. It's time to stop walking around with it, especially if you, one of those key indicators is if you hear them, see them, someone mentions them, and you get all, and you know what that means, like, I don't know. (laughs) When When you're mad, you're angry, you're frustrated, whatever that is, it evokes an emotion. We have to deal with that. Easiest way, God, help me. Help me in my heart towards this person. Help me in my heart to get past this situation. We spent this whole last series looking at the secret place and the importance of spending time in the presence of God. And if this is an area where you're like, I am struggling, take it to God in prayer. So that's, that's kind of the first thing. Second thing is this. I would encourage you, which sounds counterintuitive, but isn't Jesus often counterintuitive to our local wisdom and intellect? The other thing is to start praying for that person. You say, what? Like, like pray they get hit by a carrot truck, something like that? No, it's not, <laughs> not quite. In Psalms uh, 112, check it out in the time this week. There, there's a great line there. It talks about this person who's just doing fantastic in their life and all this stuff like that. But there's a line there where it says that this person, um, it's like he's praying for his enemies. And it says what he prays is to, to see his desires happen to them. You say, what does that mean? Like, like, so when he prays that his kids are protected and are doing well and are finding their purpose, he's praying that for his enemies. When he's praying that God uses him, he's praying that for his enemies. When he prays that, hey, as I go forth in business or whatever it is, that things go well, he's praying that for his enemies. And I will tell you, if you earnestly start praying for that person, God will do something in your heart because you can't continue to earnestly pray good things for that person and stay mad at them. And I know what you're saying. So basically, Pastor, you're putting it back on us. A to the man. Yes. Because if it's hindering you, they can't be a roadblock in your life forever. It's time for us to move forward. It's time for us to release this and go. And and, and the last thing I'll say is this. I I think often of sometimes we're holding on to it so tight right? We just got our hand. We're like, no, I'm holding on to this pastor. I'm not giving this up. And what you recognize is as you're holding on to the hurt, the pain, whatever that is, not only you're blocking out everything else, right? So you won't get hurt again, but you're not allowing healing to take place. You're not allowing God to come in and to really do the work that's needed there. And so that's what we have to do. I love when we have these messages because these are this is the, 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 the messy work of our uh, uh, broken, imperfect lives. But this is where God is at his best. This is where real healing and transformation takes place. And God is not a respecter of person. So if you find yourself in a place here and sometimes we say, well, pastor, I, 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 I want to forgive. But the person has gone still pray. God, help me with this. I release them of it. And, and by faith, believe it and receive that. It, it's okay. But not, let's not let another year, another month, another moment go by while we're still hanging on to this stuff. Amen? If you're here this morning 
and you've never made Jesus Lord of your life, oh man, now is an acceptable time to do that. You say, well, what, what does that mean? Uh, uh, I'm going to give you an opportunity in a moment. We're going to stand and we're going to sing and all of that stuff to get born again. To be born again simply means that you believe that Jesus really did live and walk this earth, that he died on the cross for our sins. He was buried for three days. He rose again and is sitting at the right hand of the Father right now. Romans 10, 9 and 10 tells us that if we believe that in our heart and confess that with our mouth, that's what causes us to be saved. When we get saved, that gives us access to heaven. But it is so much more than that. I often talk about how when I was growing up, it was like getting saved was the goal, but no one ever taught me how to live like a Christian. And I believe getting saved isn't the finish line, but it is the starting point. Because there are so many things that God has for us to do on this journey in your life, starting from today. And so one, you have to make this decision on this side before you die to get saved. And and I say it all the time and I'll say it again that if you make that decision, even if I never see you again, I'll see you again. And so we have to make sure that we secure our future, secure our our life after this one by believing in Jesus and making him our Lord and Savior. Amen. The second one is similar to that. If you say, you know, Pastor, well, look, I made that decision to, to believe in Jesus. But if I'm honest, like if I'm really honest with you right now, man, I, I feel like I'm just, I don't know, I'm just out here. Maybe you feel stuck. Maybe you feel lost. Maybe you feel like, you know what, life has happened, right? Maybe there's been trauma. Maybe there's been loss. There's been, there's been bad choices. There's been drugs. There's been sex. Could have been all types of stuff. And you're like, I don't know. I feel like I can't even pray or I feel like God doesn't love me because of mistakes I've made and nothing could be further from the truth. God has a never failing, undying love for each of us. And if you feel like you're just out here stuck, here's the good news. Turn back to him now. I often think about that, the, the father of that prodigal son, that when the prodigal son got to his lowest point and said, you know what, I can go back to my father's house. The father's out there going to meet him on the road. And I believe similarly, the Holy Spirit comes to meet us right where we are. I often use this analogy of a GPS when you're driving down the street and the GPS says like, hey, go forward two miles. So you're driving the car and you can get off at a different ramp. You can take a different turn. You can not follow the directions. And what the GPS does is it doesn't yell at you, but it recalculates based on where you are currently and charts a course to get you to where you need to go. And I believe that's what God does with us. He charts a course to get us to where we need to go. But it starts with us saying, you know what, God, I need your help. And so if you're saying, look, I'm, 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 I'm fed up, I'm, I'm tired of feeling this way and I want to go forward, there's something on the other side of this. And I would encourage you, if you say I want to uh, rededicate or recommit myself to the things of God, we would love to walk you through that process because you're not stuck. There's something on the other side. There's a place for you to go. Third is this area of prayer. If you need prayer for anything, so as you know, we are a praying church. So whether it's seemingly small or large, we would love, love, love the privilege to add our faith with you, to pray for you. uh, If there's something you need prayer about, I don't take for granted that everyone has people in their lives who will pray with them, but we will. You have people here who will pray with you. And so if you need prayer for something, don't miss an opportunity. It's like, oh, I'm worried about what people will see, whatever. Forget those people. They need prayer too. So if you need prayer for something, we would love to pray with you. And last but certainly not least is membership. If God's called you to be a part of this church, here's a couple of things you should know. No matter who's up here on a Sunday or a Wednesday night, we seek to teach the word of God in a simple and uncomplicated way so that you can understand it, but go live it. Secondly, uh, we are very intentional about getting busy in our community and making an impact because that's what Jesus tells us to do. And thirdly, we're a, a diverse group of people made up from every story imaginable. And we've made this decision that, you know what? We're going to cast our lots in together and we're going to go follow after Jesus. We're bringing all our tools, our giftings to the table, and we're going to serve and make an impact uh, while God's given us the opportunity to do so. And if you're like, man, I'd like to be a part of that. We would love to have you. Now, I have to tell you, I tell terrible jokes um, and my wife and kids think I'm the biggest cornball there is. But that's okay because even in the midst of that, they have to love me and we love each other. We don't always agree. We have to apologize and you know what we have to do? Forgive, but we feel like this is where God has called us. So we're gonna take this journey together. And if you say, man, I feel like this is where God's called me, we would love to have you here with us. So I've given you four things. One, salvation. Two, if you need to rededicate. Uh, Three, if you need prayer. And four, if you wanna join this church. So I'm gonna ask you, if you are able, can you stand right where you are? Um, We're gonna, (laughs) excuse me. 
we're going to sing our, our, our praise and worship team. Our, our team for this week is going to lead us here in a song. And so we're going to sing with them. And while they're singing, if you need to make one of those decisions, if you need to respond to one of those things, uh, we can come down. We got our, our, one of our prayer counselors over here. Amen. Music.